Welcome to Eureka Ordals. This is the third deep dungeon in the game and is available after completing Endwalker. To access Eureka Ordals, you'll need a level 81 plus job and have completed 450 of Palace of the Dead. Unlock it by talking to Ko Ravnta in Mordona and accepting the Delve into Myth Quest. Yurika Orthos, unlike other deep dungeons, focuses way more on mechanics than raw mob damage. Even on the final set, mobs hit for a near trivial amount of auto attack damage, making DPS the preferred choice of solo class, as the defensive value of tanks and healers is less relevant. However, even starting from the very first floor set, some our mobs have hidden or delayed telegraphs that will one-shot you. This effectively makes EO into a huge knowledge champ. You either know the gimmick and live, or you don't know it and die. So, to make sure you don't die, I'm here to guide you through absolutely everything. First off, let's start off with the basics of EO. I will be covering the EO specific mechanics. I may make a separate video about general deep dungeon mechanics later if requested. EO introduces several new items, the Protomander of Lethargy, Storm, and Dread, as well as Demi Clones. Demi Clones looted from silver chests past floor 7. Summon a clone that follows you until you either die or leave the floor. There are three types of Demi Clone. Ume, a white mage. Dolga, a black mage. And then the Onion Knight, who is technically a paladin, but really in a league of their own. Ume will cast a Wind Dot of around 40 potency, Stones dealing roughly 210 potency, and cast Cure 2 and Stone Skin 2. Ume is the lowest value Demi Clone, as survivability usually isn't an issue, and when it is, aka when you do huge multi pulls, the heals aren't exactly reliable at all. Dolga opens by casting an AoE Petrification, which stuns mobs for 10 seconds preventing them from moving or taking any action. He then applies a Thunder Dot, which is around 200 potency, and then uses Fire, which deals roughly 450 potency, and then a Fell that deals around 900. Dolga speed level kills by a considerable amount, and helps you ignore many mechanics. However, do be aware that when mobs get their skills cancelled by petrification or other means such as stun, some of them will attempt to immediately recast them afterwards, which can lead to quick death, so do be wary of that. The Onion Knight puts out a very potent dot of around 270 potency, and even higher potency than Dolga with basic attacks. To put in a frame of reference, the DPS of an Onion Knight roughly matches that of a DPS with strength active. Oh, it also casts Onion Cure when you're low health, healing 30k health. This is the strongest demi clone, and it's recommended to save them for the final bosses to greatly speed them up. Let's talk about the new proto matters. Dread is essentially a combination of rage and lust, allowing you to one-shot mobs in melee range, or apply AoE damage and stack invulnerability for 3 minutes. This effect lasts for 1 minute and you'll get much more mileage clearing out a floor than using it to speed up a boss. Using the second skill is great for pulling mobs at range when it's too dangerous to run in. Note that the one-shot effect of the melee hit does not work when knockback is disabled, and also doesn't work on dread beasts, which we'll touch on later. Lethargy inflicts a very potent soul on the entire floor for 10 minutes, causing casts to be immensely slower, and auto attack frequency to be lower as well. Attacks that had late telegraphs will show early, giving you plenty of time to react. This is great to use if you're uncomfortable with certain mob mechanics, and can also function similarly to a witching, allowing you to pull a lot of mobs with less danger, whether you're setting up for a storm play or just doing a big AoE pull. It does not work on bosses. Storm sets the HP of all mobs to 1. However, they will regen if out of combat, unless the auto heal penalty flurry debuff is active. 
Ways to maximize the use of this include multipoles with dots with optional witching or lethargy for safety. Delayed damage, such as Astrologist Earthly Star, is an option as well, but it's not ideal without pulling mobs first, as no matter how good your timing is, there's a chance that a server attack happens and regens mobs by 10% HP, which can lead to a sticky situation. Storm does work on Dread Beasts, which we'll go over right now. Dread Beasts are powerful creatures that have a rare chance to spawn on any floor. How powerful? Like, they will literally one-shot any non-tank with a single auto-attack. So, how do you deal with this? They all aggro by sight, so you can sneak around them when necessary. If you defeat them, however, your party will receive a 30 minute buff depending on the monster killed. The Lamia Queen will grant a regen buff that heals 3000 health a tick. She has a tank buster attack where she throws an AoE onto her aggro target for extra damage, and will cast gaze attacks at certain HP thresholds inflicting stone curse on anything hit by it, including enemies, allowing them to get killed in one shot. However, due to the insane damage she puts out, it's not really feasible to take her around the floor to try to get mobs to gaze at her. She also gains stacking regen over time, making it harder to kill her. The Demi Kogma will grant a 10% damage reduction buff. It has a double attack and grants itself stacking damage reduction over time, and has an enraged cast at low health that likely kills everyone. Finally, the Mirasidian clone gives a 10% damage buff. It has a double attack that hits in a small line in front of it, and periodically attempts to buff itself with a damage buff, which you can interject. It also drops a meteor on the aggro target, which you can line of sight similar to that of Heaven on High. Typically, you don't even need to worry about these mechanics. While a tank with steel and either a healer or lethargy can survive the damage, it's better to just use storm to kill it. To do this safely, first use a witching on it to prevent it from one-shotting you, then pull it, pop storm, and finish it off right after. Note that if it turns into an imp, you should take caution or sprint away as you pull it, especially if you have other mobs with you, as an imp dread beast will still do significant damage. Anyways, that's it for the basics. I'll be publishing several videos to cover important things you need to know for each floor set before you dive in. A link to the whole playlist is in the description, and if you prefer the text guide, that one is in there too. I'll see you guys in the next one.